Hi there, David Forrest, Infectious Diseases and Critical Care Medicine. My purpose today is to describe the rationale, benefits, risks, and protocol for mask usage by staff in the intensive care unit. Note that while mask use is currently restricted to staff in the ICU, these concepts are applicable far more broadly, including to the lay public. Furthermore, the level of COVID-19 infection in our community does not yet dictate more widespread mask usage in the hospital, but may well do. And it may well dictate mask usage by the public for similar reasons. At the outset, it is critical to understand the purpose of mask usage in this context. It is not for personal protection. This is a mask, surgical grade, with a face shield that is designed for the protection of us as healthcare workers. It is intended to reduce the risk of acquiring infection from others or for becoming contaminated ourselves or on our clothing with a pathogen such as MRSA that can be carried to another patient. It is therefore part of personal protective equipment or PPE. This is a surgical grade mask without a face shield. It is designed to prevent transmission of droplets from us to others, such as in the operating room. However, these also prevent transmission of droplets containing infectious particles, including viruses like COVID-19 and even airborne pathogens such as tuberculosis to other people, patients or staff. I have therefore termed this neighbor protective equipment or NPE. We use NPE when interacting with others at work whether staff or patients who are not on additional precautions in order to protect them from us. So, PPE is what I use to protect myself from you. NPE is what I use to protect you from me. They are not interchangeable. Wearing NPE does not substitute for the use of PPE. So if PPE is needed for patient care, NPE must be removed. But because of its purpose to protect you from me, because we don't know that it is heavily contaminated with a highly infectious agent, NPE can be reused. This is unlike PPE, which is contaminated with known or suspected pathogens which pose a significant risk to ourselves or others and must not be taken from the patient's bedside and so must be removed and discarded after each use. On the other hand, NPE need only be discarded when it becomes moist, as the barrier to droplet transmission becomes ineffective then, or when it's visibly soiled, or when it's broken or torn. Regardless, in both cases, PPE and NPE are contaminated after use and doffing and redonning in the case of NPE must be performed carefully to mitigate the risk of contaminating yourself. Now there's much discussion about this sort of mask usage far more broadly. Though why this is not being advocated actively by public health in and outside of hospital is inexplicable to me. For instance, public health policy is to require healthcare workers who are not vaccinated against the less infectious and less severe influenza virus, wear a mask at all times during influenza season in the workplace. It is said that this is intended to reduce the risk of spread to others from asymptomatic, asymptomatic healthcare workers. But that is precisely the same value of NPE mask usage with COVID-19 and other viral respiratory infections. The fact that it's policy for healthcare workers not vaccinated against influenza to use NPE but not for COVID-19 is frankly hypocritical, particularly in facilities where there's a significant risk of transmission, such as in long-term care facilities. Regardless, I believe NPE mask usage is an effective means of pandemic control that should be instituted widely by the public. And really, I think should be adopted as an accepted practice every cold season and encouraged by public health even a policy, at least for those who have symptomatic viral-like respiratory illness, as they do in most Asian countries. So mask usage as NPE is an adjunct 
to standard infection control practices and social distancing. So why is it needed in our ICU? Very simply, we are unable to maintain social distancing. With up to 27 staff, including trainees, orienting and upgrading staff, as well as patients in a crowded and cluttered ICU of about 3,000 square feet that has been called the worst physical plant in Canada. Further, as you know, there is a higher incidence of COVID-19 amongst healthcare workers. While it's assumed this is due to patient to staff transmission, at least in some is undoubtedly due to staff to staff transmission either because one of us has acquired it in hospital or in the community and brought it into the hospital and there's transmission between staff. It is, I believe, then a critical intervention to reduce our risk of community spread in our healthcare workspace. Just an additional note, the NPE mask usage by patients also is effective as NPE for them now protecting us from them. And in the context of respiratory illness and mild hypoxemia, such as a patient on nasal prongs, NPE mask usage can actually be an adjunct to oxygenation, oxygen supplementation as the mask produces an oxygen reservoir. So we are now advocating mask use by potential and confirmed COVID patients, both as a therapeutic intervention and to reduce risk of transmission to others, other patients, and staff. So how should you manage your NPE? First of all, preparation. The first thing is you need to do hand hygiene. Obtain an NPE mask and a save-a-day tray. Write your name on the outside and the inside of the mask as well as on the save-a-day tray. Make sure you perform hand hygiene after handling the pen, which may be dirty, of course. In order to don the mask, after performing hand hygiene, put the mask on, fitting it to your nasal bridge and the straps behind your ears and adjust the mask. Then perform hand hygiene. If you need to adjust the mask or your nose is itchy, it's best to do that with a tissue. Then you can discard the tissue and again use hand hygiene. It is critical that you do not touch your face. In order to doff the mask, because you are going to be reusing it, again after performing appropriate hand hygiene, grasp the straps of the mask from behind the ears and place the mask outside up in the save-a-day tray. Then perform hand hygiene again. In order to redon the mask, once again after appropriate hand hygiene, grasp the mask by the straps and place it carefully behind your ears. If you need to adjust the mask once more, use a tissue and discard it and then perform hand hygiene. What should you do on breaks? Well, on breaks, you should be wearing your mask, take your save-a-day tray with you, and when you're on break, wear your mask while you're interacting with others, maintaining social distancing as possible. Obviously, you can't wear your mask when you need to eat. If so, you need to find a place to eat that's two meters away from others, and remove your mask after hand hygiene, form, performing the same procedure as previously, outside up in the save-a-day tray, eat, and then redon your mask as you did previously. Always make sure that you do hand hygiene before and after touching the mask and do not touch your face. Thank you.